Richard Thompson from Cheveley Park, who, who joins me now. Richard, good morning. Good morning, Nick. Um, but first of all, congratulations on a on a pretty amazing week. Uh, what a what a really classy collection of uh, of young horses you you've got. Uh, were, were you all able to to enjoy the week as much as you as much as you wanted to? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, we had a fabulous a fabulous time watching it. Obviously, disappointed not to be there, of course, but hopefully back next year and. Uh, it's just great that all the hobby, obviously our six horses, as you know, five of them obviously finished first or second, and the and the one that we expected probably to win of all of them, of course, was Envoy, who fell. So it was a bit of a roller coaster week, but obviously an excellent week as well. And I, I, I'm, I'm, I can only really begin this interview one way, Richard, which is to to, to ask you um, about the the legacy left by your your late father, David. Because am I right in thinking that this this branch of the operation, this um, this clutch of National Hunter horses really owes, owes more to him than to anybody else. Oh, 100%, uh, Nick. Yeah, I mean, Chiefly, as you know, is, a, is a primarily a, a stud farm and a flat, flat, uh, a flat race operation, racing and breeding. And three years ago, I suppose it was, my father, obviously, who always been keen on the jumps. And as you know, we had some luck yeah. with my, my mother's colours with party politics back in 92. But he was keen, as he was getting older, to, um, you know, we'd always watch Cheltenham and obviously loved Cheltenham. And, of course... Uh, were keen to, he was keen, sorry, to have some uh, runners at Cheltenham. And uh, so at that, that point in time, probably about three years ago or so, invested heavily, obviously, and, and since then, obviously, as, as, as well, um, in a number of um, young horses. So definitely his, um, his initiative, and it wouldn't be something that Chief Lee would have you know, done in the, in the ordinary course of business, but because he was getting older, um, you know, it, it, it's all about, uh, it was all about sort of, you know, enjoying it and, and the jumps, of course, has provided us some fantastic moments in the last uh, two or three years. And, uh, you know, something for him, actually, in the winter when there was nothing much going on in the flat as well. So uh, it, it was, it was that, that, that was the reason, really. Yeah, I mean, you talk about party policy. I mean, one, one of the first horses I can remember running in your, in your father's colour, because he had the blue with the white cross belts, didn't he? Yes, he did. And yeah, that Grant Falcon was the first, as she yeah. you know, ran in his colours in and won the Haydock Sprint Cup. And that was... Well, Polar Falcon obviously being the sire of Pivotal uh, and came back to stud obviously at Cheveley in 1992 and obviously Pivotal was his first ever foal. But um, yeah, my mother's colours obviously were the colours used for the, for the um, for party politics. Yeah, the won the Grand National in 92. Yeah. Um, so you, you talk about this uh, latest sort of round of investment, if you like, three, three or four years ago. There's one thing wanting to, to get in and have a bit of fun and have a few runners at Cheltenham. It's another building up a string like this. I mean... Can you quite believe, I know there was a lot of money spent, but can you quite believe the strike rate of exceptional horses to, to just merely good ones? Yeah, I mean, good, good point, Nick. I mean, absolutely not, because we know we've been in the horse game for many, many years, and of course, you do need patience, <coughs> and you do need luck, and uh, of course, we have had, obviously, it feels that, obviously, as you say, in this, not, not, not many horses we bought. I mean, you know, we've got a few, I think we've got 16 in training, 16 national hunts, and we've sold a few that weren't so good, but... Um, yeah, it's incredible. Incredible strike rate. It's hard to believe, really. I mean, we did pay, we have paid good money for every single horse that we acquired, basically. And some of these horses, as you know, Envoy, Sir Gerard, the purchases we made in December just recently, uh, with, with my father, obviously, under my father's um, sort of uh, guidance, et cetera. Um, uh, yeah, they're big, they're big prices, but still, yeah, fantastic. Uh, incredible to uh, see the success. Yeah, and you'll know full well, Richard. I mean, that you there are plenty of people who've spent three, four, five. We saw a case this week, six hundred and fifty thousand on horses that have been busted flushes. Yeah, you you've got to be quite careful as well. There's plenty of expensive rubbish out there as well as expensive good ones. Oh, totally. Look, I mean, it probably is. We, we obviously probably use the best people to scout the scout for the horses, etc. You know, combinations of you know Willie Mullins and Harold, and obviously Gordon, obviously with Tom Malone and and obviously uh, Alex Elliott and, and, and Henry de Bromhead. So, you know, a good combination of experience where we were able to, you know, get some good judges to acquire these horses for us. So do you think, do you think that's the key? Do you think that it's the sourcing? It's, it's, it's how you go about getting them and who you get to, to, to find them for you? Uh, totally. I'm, 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 I mean, I think any, 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 you know, any sort of, uh, what's the word, the world of business, essentially, or the world of sport, it's about finding that talent, isn't it? And some people are just very good at, spent all their time trying to source it and of course you know there are experts in every sort of field and uh, I think on, with, with this sort of bunch of national hunt horses we did pick the, we did pick some good people to pick them to pick to find them for us I'm fascinated to know why um, 
your good horses, exclude, well, almost exclusively, I know you've had one or two trained here, are, are all in Ireland? Look, it's a good question, Nick. I mean, you know, obviously you've, you've uh, alluded to, I mean, prize money was obviously a factor in terms of obviously having, and, and actually I suppose it was having a bit of a change. We've obviously had a lot of horses trained in England, and I think having some Irish horses, horses trained in Ireland, plus the, the fact that because we were looking for some, some Cheltenham success, uh, obviously, you know, the combination of the various uh, trainers that we picked obviously had had some good success before we actually put the horse in training there. Um, I was sitting next to Willie Mullins at a lunch about three years ago, the Peter Sullivan lunch, and we had a good conversation. My father, who obviously was at that time talking about buying some horses, and it just sort of combined that effectively, you know, I mean, his decision, obviously, let's have a few in Ireland. It was uh, something a bit new, but also the combination of prize money and, and, and Cheltenham success. So it's all those things. It wasn't one <coughs> single driving factor. No. It was just all the stars just aligned at the right time. Exactly. I think that's right. I mean, look, I think going back, we have paid, obviously we put I mean, a significant investment into these horses as well. So that's obviously, we, that, can't be, um, uh, that can't be overlooked. But yeah, I think everything, as you say, aligning. What does that mean for the longevity of the national hunt situation, Richard? You obviously mentioned your late father was the driving force behind it. You know, they're, you're not primarily buying mares, they're, they're geldings, etc. Um, what's the future hold for Chivley Park look, and National Hunt Racing? Yeah. Look, good, good question. I mean, we, obviously, we've made a significant investment. I mean, we've got, some, we've got a group of young horses uh, that will hopefully um, be around for the next three or four years or more. We still we bought three, you know, sort of well-priced horses in December at the various sales. So, look, it, it was my father's project, so it's not something that we, have, we were ever before he said, let's do it, or since he obviously unfortunately passed away, hasn't been on our agenda, to be honest with you. We're just going to enjoy the, six, well, the success we've just had and hopefully some more success over the next three or four years with this, with this bunch of horses. It's not, you know, because it was, it was, a, it was a left field um, um, initiative by him, but the stud farm itself obviously is primarily flat, or is, is totally mm -hmm. flat in breeding and racing. And of course, you know, I, I wouldn't want to comment longer term, but certainly in the short to medium term, we're happy with this bunch of, with this bunch of horses that we have. So, I mean, as, as you say, you're not going to go out to the boutique sales this year and, and sort of redouble, if you like. You're no, not no we're not. No, not for the moment. You're not no, going to keep no. loading up with more jumpers. No. No, we're very happy with the current squad, and we're very lucky to have the current squad. And, uh, you, know, maybe we'll, you know, I think we'll just enjoy, enjoy this lot of horses for the, mo for the time being. The only thing I would ask, though, Richard, on, on a sort of related theme is, to what extent do you think you personally will be bitten so hard by this bug of Cheltenham's success that it'll start having an effect on you. Oh, look, I, I've been bitten since um, my father bought, uh, or my parents bought Chibity Park in 1975. I got the horse racing bug from a, an early age and obviously always loved, actually, the Grand National. So having sort of been involved in my mother winning it was fantastic. Yeah. Of course, um, obviously, Cheltenham is a bug, isn't it? I mean, we, we all get addicted to Cheltenham. It's just incredible the way it's evolved over the last 20 years or, or plus. So I'm, I'm, I've been bitten by Cheltenham for many, many years. And my father, too, actually, had been for probably the last 20 years, which is why he probably, you know, on the back of us, him and I watching it together over a number of years, decided to, uh, decided to have a crack uh, three years ago. And uh, we've been blessed with having seven Cheltenham winners in the last, well, in, th in three seasons. Um, you know, and a few other placed horses, so it's been fantastic. I'm, look, Nick, I'm, I'm totally bitten by it, <laughs> so that's a fact. I, uh, I can't deny that. OK, well, I, I, hope, I hope that it's a, it's a venture that is, is sustained, at, at least in part, if not, if not forever and ever, amen. But, um, Richard, it's been a, an amazing, amazing run of success, and uh, I appreciate you taking some time out this morning. Pleasure, pleasure, uh, uh, Nick and Richard. Thank you.